Okay, so let's get started. Uh, thank you for coming, everyone. Uh, my name is Carlos Pesaradros. I'm a software engineer. I work for Elastic uh, and work on bits specifically. So if you were in the previous talk, uh, I, uh, we have been working on that. Uh, so probably you already know the Elastic stack. Uh, you know, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Uh, we used to call this is the Elk stack, but then bits came into equation, so now I, we usually prefer to call it the Elastic stack, because, you know, Belk or Elk B sounds weird. <laughs> and we just released 6.0 a, few, a couple of weeks ago, and I really love this, this animation, because somehow it's, it, it shows how uh, the Elastic stack is made of many pieces, but when you put all of them together, they work really great. And I like that really much. Uh, so today we'll be mostly speaking about bits and Kubernetes, of course. Uh, so let's get started with that. So what's bits? Bits is a family of lightweight zippers that collect and zip all kinds of operational data to Elasticsearch. What do we mean by lightweight? Well, this may have many meanings, but for us, is uh, everything is written in Go. Uh, we zip everything in a single binary that uh, doesn't require any external library. And yeah, the CPU and memory consumption is usually low, depending on your needs. Uh, so meet the bit family, the bits family. Uh, uh, this is it, packet bit, metric bit. Uh, I will be speaking about all of them. This is the list of bits that are maintained by the bits team, are officially supported by Elastic. But just for you to know, there is a community of bits out there uh, all over GitHub. Uh, so if uh, the official bits doesn't fit your needs, maybe there is a community bit uh, supporting your use case. Uh, I'm going to go quickly over all of them, except for WinLock bit, which is for Windows event logs. But as I'm doing a demo later on, uh, I'm going to try to do this quick. OK, so logs. How do we get logs? Uh, which we have something called FileBit. Uh, it tells some zips logs for you. Uh, it does a lot of things like back pressure control. This means that if it's ingesting your logs into Elasticsearch, Logstash, it's able to detect that system is overloaded and stop or throttle. Uh, so it waits uh, to the system to cope up with the load. Uh, we can do a structure logging. That means we can parse, parse the log lines and extract metrics from them for you. Uh, also multi-line for, for instance, if your logs contain, I don't know, stack, tra stack traces, we are able to uh, compact all the different log lines and put them together. And we do many other things. Uh, for metrics and events, we have many different bits. The main one to me will be metric bit. Uh, it pulls. API for uh, the API of different services is a common use case for a monitoring agent. Uh, so it talks normally to the service you want to monitor and takes the metrics from it for you. Uh, it stores things in Elasticsearch in an efficient way. And actually, we're still improving this. And with 6.0, it went down by a lot. Uh, and it also supports application metrics from, from other uh, protocols or standards like uh, getting metrics from Java application with GMX or Prometheus, for instance. A packet bit, you can think of it as, a, as a, like a distributed Wireshark. It taps into the network, speaks different protocols, and can extract what's going on for you. Uh, basically, it, it understands protocols like HTTP, MySQL, whatever. Uh, it reads for all the packets in the network and then extract like a, trans a transaction from them. So creates an event in Elasticsearch. Recently, we added TLS handshake parsing. So this is, that's really cool for security use cases. So you can get what's going on when your users are using SSL. Uh, Herbit is like uptime monitoring. It can talk to your services from time to time. You can schedule checks and check that everything is available and running. And audit bit, this was the last one added to the list. Uh, basically, it connects to the Linux audit framework. It can work with audit D as a sidecar or, or standalone. 
And something cool that it does is, uh, you know, Linux audit framework gives you a lot of events on, on what's going on with the security on, or with, on your system. Uh, what audit bit does is read all that events and correlate the ones that are related and create a single event in your Elasticsearch. And it also does file integrity monitoring, so you can check if someone changed some of your files, for instance, binaries. Um, for traces, uh, recently, uh, Upbeat, uh, a company that was working on APM, joined forces with Elasticsearch. Uh, it, what, it, it, it went acquired by Elastic, and, and since then, they have been working on open sourcing a lot, a lot of, of their code. Uh, it's in alpha state. As of now, I'm showing later on, but just to take into account that it's in alpha. But yeah, uh, they are doing really great stuff on, on APM uh, by the moment. There are Node.js and Python agents with support for things like Flask or Django. And of course, more coming. So today I come here to talk about uh, Kubernetes and, and Docker in this case. Uh, this year, we have been working a lot on supporting this well using Bits. I want to thank you, especially BJ Samuel. He works for eBay, and they contributed a lot of code here. They use Bits internally, and yeah, we are really grateful for that. So BJ, if you're watching, thank you. Uh, so what's all about uh, with uh, containers, infrastructure, with microservices? Basically, when you are using this kind of architecture, everything is a moving target. You, uh, static, uh, static configurations that are not valid anymore. I mean, you can, you can expect everything to be in place and not moving. So we need a specific, a specific tools to track things down. Uh, and we have implemented a few primitives that you can use to monitor what's going on with containers. Uh, first of all, we added Docker. We, have, we had it already, actually, and we recently added the Kubernetes one, so you can monitor the overall, the overall state of, of, your, of your Kubernetes. So I think we saw that in previous talk. Uh, we also added metadata processors uh, that help you enrich your events. Anything that is coming out of your bits can be enriched with information that gives you context on where it came from. And that's really useful when then you want to navigate uh, that data, that metrics, that logs, whatever, or even correlate them. So we have something to add information about what cloud you are running on, something to add information from Docker, and something to add information uh, from Kubernetes. I will show all this in the demo. Uh, this is an example of how an event that comes from FileBit, so this is a log, uh, looks when you are using the the different processors. And of course, you can use all of them or any, or only the ones that you are interested in. So what you are seeing here is a log line from FileBeat actually, it's telling that it's connected to Elasticsearch, but then you get a lot of metadata of where this line, this line came from. So I know the pod name, the container within that pod, the namespace, and even the labels. And also I get information from the cloud it's running on. So in this case, it's Google Cloud, as you can see. And this is how it works. Basically, we are polling the Kubernetes API constantly. And every time that a new pod is launched, we get the event and we create metadata for it and put it in our internal cache. So when we read a log line from Docker or whatever, uh, we parse that, get the container ID, and then use that container ID to check on this table. Uh, and normally, you find a match and get the, the metadata information for, for, that, for that container. Uh, then we get that metadata, put it with the event, and ship it to Elasticsearch, Logstars, or Kafka you want. Uh, let's talk now about auto-discover. This is not yet released, but it's, it will be released really soon. It's already in the release branch, so you can expect it in the following, week, in the following weeks. We have the auto discover, and um, what is this about? It's we watch for Docker events and react to changes. So allow you to define a set of predefined templates to apply when something goes on. For instance, in this case, we have a condition which is if the image, the Docker image is etcd, we want you to launch this configuration on metric bit, launch this module to monitor it. 
And as you can see, we get the host, the IP address of, the, of that container from the, from the auto discover. So we just put that in the template and it will automatically spawn the, the right IP. So this is how it works, uh, more or less. Bits watching for the Docker events API. When you launch a new container or Kubernetes does, you get an event uh, with all, uh, and we create like an internal structure uh, with all the information about what happened, what the event about. Then we take your, conf your configuration and do a condition matching. In this case, the condition of etcd matches, so this spawned a new uh, module. We take the template that you gave us in the configuration and do the bar expansion. So from the auto discover event, we do bar, bar expansion to the configuration that you gave us and you end up with the final uh, module that we launch for you. In the same way, if the container goes out, uh, we do the same thing, but the other way around. We detect that and stop the module. Um, let me talk about how to deploy this and deployment strategies, how we normally deploy all the different bits. Uh, so when you are running bits on a Docker host, we normally run them from a container. You could do that also from the host itself, so it's up to you, but we provide both documentation and Docker images on how to do it. Uh, and depending on what you are doing, we would like to mount uh, things from the host. For example, on MetricBit, we mount the proc file system, so we got, get access to all the uh, host proc, uh, proc information, so we can monitor that with the system module. We will see that in a while. And for the file bit case, to extract the logs, we do it in a similar way. We mount barley Docker containers and read the logs from there. And as I said, when you are reading the log, then uh, enrich that with information from Kubernetes or Docker. Then we send everything to Elasticsearch and you can see it in Kibana. And if you are deploying in Kubernetes, uh, you will do the same thing, but uh, we provide demo sets, files, manifest, example manifest, so you can use them or modify them to whatever you need. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into a demo. Um, basically, this is the demo I'm showing. That URL you can visit already. It's a really simple application written in Python with Django, uh, WSGI with engines frontends. Just be careful, it's not elastic, it's like an internal URL, so it's ELSTC. So the idea of the application is that you can submit questions about this talk. If we get the right questions, I can answer from there. You can also vote them, uh, so the questions you want to get answered, you can upvote them. And this is how the application is running. Uh, we have a MySQL pod, single one. This is really simple deploy. It's just for testing, just for showcasing this. And a couple of pods, I think it's three, uh, running the application itself with an engine front end. So what we are doing, and of course a load balancer on the public IP. What we are doing here is getting the logs, getting metrics, metrics from this, using auto discover to, for instance, detect that MySQL, that engines, and monitor them. Also doing network analysis using Packetbit and application performance metrics using the Elastic APM. Okay, so this is the demo application. Let's see if you are doing anything with it. Okay, so some people are submitting questions. That's good, thank you. And let's see how we can monitor this, how this is going. I don't have file bit deployed yet, so I don't have logs here, but I'm about to deploy it. So I can start uh, getting the logs into my Elasticsearch instance. This one is running in Elastic Cloud, but uh, Elastic Cloud runs the same Elasticsearch that you will download from uh, our page. It's open source, so it could be running anywhere. Uh, so I'm opening this repo with information on how to do this demo. Uh, so you will get access to all these YAML files. Uh, let me deploy file bit. Okay, so this is now creating the file bit demo set and doing some setups. It, it takes care of setup in anything from dashboards to anything. And 
logs are, fl are flowing in already. Let me put some refresh times here. Okay, so as you can see, I'm, I'm getting logs from all my different containers. Uh, let me sort this. Okay, and after uh, bootstrapping everything, it's able to uh, tag everything with the proper uh, metadata. So as you can see here, I can get information from the pod name or the container name for everything. And maybe you just saw that it backfilled um, the whole last 15 minutes. This is because we are extracting the timestamp from the Docker uh, log, so we get that timestamp and submit the event with the correct timestamp. So now I got logs from everything that happened before I deployed this, which is cool. And the important thing about metadata is that it allows you to navigate everything uh, on your infrastructure. So if I'm watching logs here, I maybe want to watch logs for all the engines that I have deployed. And as you can see in the pod name, I have different pod names around. Or maybe in this case, yeah, I have different pod names here. Uh, so I'm seeing the logs for all of them. And I may, maybe I want to focus in only one of them, and that's something you can do too. You can see how the log lines change. And I'm getting now the logs only for that specific pod, which I think is cool. Um, forgot to say that we are also using auto-discover here. Can you read the text? OK. So if you see these lines, I'm detecting the engines container, and I'm passing the engines module for file bit. What the engines module does is do all the handling of the logs for you and extract the information so you have metrics and stuff instead of, of the log lines. So this way I'm getting both. I'm getting the logs, but also getting uh, metrics from, from file, from file bit for, for engines. So I can go and open the engines dashboard for file bit. And this gives you an overview of uh, all the visits I'm having. And uh, we have people from other sites, probably in the streaming. Hello. Uh, and a lot of information on you know, user agents, uh, what you are visiting, what you are voting, actually, and volume data. So this is really cool. This is coming from all the logs. And now we can jump to do metrics. So Metribit can monitor both your host system, also the Kubernetes layer, and everything that you are running on top of them. So I enable system module here, Kubernetes module here, and I'm using Autodiscover to monitor the different things that I know that will be in the system. Uh, for instance, MySQL. I'm matching the condition here, so if you see a MySQL module launch this, uh, sorry, a MySQL container launch this module to monitor it. You can do a lot of tricks here, because at the end we get an auto-discover module, uh, sorry, an auto-discover event, and can react to that and do whatever we want. So in this case, we could be doing uh, something based on annotations on that, on that pod. So if I see this annotation, like, I don't know, Prometheus scrape, I can launch the Prometheus module. So you don't need to hard code things here. It, this is just an example. Uh, MySQL, and also engines. So I'm launching this now. So probably we'll see logs from metric big here. Well, if I remove the filter. And it will start uh, seeping information about uh, what's going on in the, in the host. So let's open the dashboard. So I'm opening first the system overview that gives me an overview of the hosts that are running this Kubernetes instance. As you can see, I have three hosts. Sorry, this is because of the resolution. Uh, and I get an idea of the CPU on the different uh, hosts. As you see from the name, I'm running them on, on World Cloud. And I get an overall idea of the CPU, memory, disk, network. So, and as you can see here, the histogram on host CPU. Uh, we don't have metrics only for like the last 30 seconds, but this will be full of the information of what happened in the past minutes. So 
I will say this is the host that is running MySQL. Only one of them is running MySQL. And because of the memory usage, I will say this is the one. So uh, let me jump into it, and we can see uh, information about that host. And you get more detailed information here, like everything we saw before, plus more detailed CPU memory profiles. And of course, the top memory and CPU usage processes, and there it is, MySQL in the top. Uh, okay. So this is for the system module on metric bits. Let me open now the Kubernetes uh, overview dashboard. As I say, this is directly set up by a, a metric bit. So when you deploy the manifest, all these dashboards come, come with it. Metric bit takes care of deploying them. So here we are seeing that we have three nodes, a cluster of three nodes with nine deployments going on. Everything looks good. Uh, we don't have any unavailable pod. And you can see also the CPU usage per node and so on. And also top CPU and top memory intensive processes, taking into account that we are running all the different bits here. So we can see file bit around here, for instance, or MySQL. OK. Uh, we are also monitoring MySQL. Thank you to the auto discover feature. So we detected that MySQL is running and launched the MySQL uh, module for it. Uh, and there it is. Uh, we get an idea of uh, the different queries that are happening now on MySQL, active connections, all these kind of metrics that you may be interested on. As we said, uh, I just launched this, so we don't have much history on this, but you will see the, the, full, the full graph for it. Let's now take a look to PacketBit. As I said, PacketBit taps into the network and understands what's going on on the different protocols. I configured this one to understand DNS, HTTP, and MySQL. And I tell it the ports I'm interested on because it's too expensive to listen in too many ports. So I'm listening only in the ports I'm interested. So this is deploying packet bit for me. And we still start having some information from it. And I really like this because it gets you a lot of insights uh, uh, from what you normally don't see. It may be CPU intensive, depending on what you are doing. But I think it's really cool for some cases. For instance, this is what I get using packet bit for MySQL. It's able to understand the MySQL protocol. And, and tell you what are the queries that are being run. So these are the queries that are happening uh, as we speak, uh, probably all oh, the traffic generated by, by you. And yeah, I get a lot of information that I can also get with metric bits. So you too, so it's depending of, of your needs, of course. And we also have with packet bit the HTTP parsing. So this is how it looks. I mean. PacketBit doesn't know anything about these web services. It's agnostic. Uh, but it's able to understand what's going on. So actually, I get information not only for my, uh, my application, demo application, but for other services. But this is a cool use case, uh, actually. Because as I said, everything gets stuck with metadata. So I can filter to the namespace I'm interested on. So I'm getting all the metrics from PacketBit from all the for, for the whole cluster, and I ca can decide to, uh, to listen only or to watch only the ones for my default namespace. I can add this filter here. Ah, oh, sorry. So. It already gives me the, the possible values from, from the document, the existing documents. But I can add that filter. And then I'm only watching the, the, the request, the HTTP request for, for my namespace where the application is running. So this is thank you to having all these processors with metadata information. We think they are really useful. And they are available in all the different bits. And let's check APM. I, I did a trick with this one. I let it run for the whole for the whole demo, so it's already running. I'm not deploying it now. As I said, uh, this is just in alpha status, but it's already working and it's really great. So 
is open source, so you can have a look to it. Uh, in this case, I instrumented my Django application. You can see that once I open the repo, but it's really easy to instrument. Uh, and it's getting information about all the views that are available and that you are hitting uh, in the web page. Uh, as it speaks Django, I get the exact name of the view from Django. And as for now, I can see the traces using this. Uh, so you, say, you see the response times and, and the results of the HTTP request in, in the dashboard. I, I can also see the traces for any specific view. So in this case, I get information on timing about the MySQL queries and so on. Alpha state, it's already released and really cool, so give that a try. Um, I created a dashboard, I created a dashboard for, for KubeCon. So what I'm trying to show is the power of having everything in one place and having the core metadata to navigate all that and correlate all that. I think it's really cool when you can do that. So this dashboard was created for this demo. Uh, basically, the only filter I have here is using this Kubernetes metadata and instructing uh, Kibana to filter only to the default namespace, but this could be everything. I mean, I can even disable this and I get information for my whole cluster, which is probably too much. But for this demo, as you can see, I can see, uh, as you can see, we, we have all the running, uh, let me do this bigger, maybe. All the running pods with the containers inside, I, can, I have here this, uh, so I can see that there is a MySQL with a MySQL container on it. This is a, the application pod with a, both an, the application container and the engines container, and these other two are also pods. I get the logs for everything here, so everything in this namespace, logs are here. I get CPU usage per pod, I get memory usage per pod. Also, I took the file bit uh, view from the logs, from the engine's logs. As you can see, I, I, I can focus, for instance, in, to see what's going on in these errors. So the whole dashboard uh, changed for it. So I went here, and I, then I can check maybe the logs for what's going on, and I can see here. Something's going on. We'll check later. Let me go back to the view of the last 15 minutes, for instance. So I think that's really cool. I mean, I can have everything in one place and correlate all, that, all this data, so that's really useful. The same goes for APM. There it is, and information also on how MySQL is answering. And yeah, the same way I, I drill down to some time range, I can do it for a, a specific pod. So for instance, I have all the logs here, for all my applications in this namespace, but I may want to watch only the ones from MySQL. Well, in this case, MySQL doesn't have any logs. Because it's not logging anything. So let me focus on if I want. So maybe only this pod. I get the logs for this pod only. And in this pod, I have both engines and application. Uh, so these are the HTTP requests that are being answered by this pod and only this pod. And the same for APM. So if only one of the pods is the, what you are interested in. This is a good way to use in metadata to, to navigate that. And within this pod, I have two containers, so engines and the application itself. I can focus in one of them. So logs for engines, these are. So this will be the exact log that we will be seeing uh, with uh, watching Docker logs for that container. And I can watch uh, all the system usage for it. So I think this is everything I wanted to show today. Uh, thank you for coming. And maybe you have some interesting questions here. I, I might, can also take questions from the mic if you want. Uh, word Joe, thank you. <laughs> OK. Uh, yeah, I'm publishing the slides. So yeah, give me a couple of, I don't know. I will publish them during today. So if you go back to the KubeCon, uh, etc., uh, these slides will be published there. Uh, I don't know what I'm having for lunch. Thank you. Uh, Non-standard log formats. Uh, hi, BJ. So yeah, we are working on some things, but always you can uh, use the ingest pipeline or logstash to do the heavy lifting there. If you need to process uh, some format of, of your logs, you can use both 
Elasticsearch and, and Logstash to process them, and we just ship them. Uh, <laughs> uh, is Bits an alternative pro to Prometheus? Well, I'm not sure, I don't think so. Maybe, depending on your use case, but we can work together with Prometheus. We can met get metrics from Prometheus. We uh, speak the Prometheus protocol. And I think we are doing different things. We are sending metrics for later analysis, so. Can you compare Filebit versus Friendly for? Well, this is, I, I guess this, uh, this is a long comparison. I don't know. I, I invite you to uh, test it and see what you think. And maybe someone can do the comparison for me. So thank you. And if you have any other question. Yeah, go ahead. Can you comment on how different bits of inner metrics, for example, does packet bit or file bit? Uh, okay. Uh, so for packet bit, we are uh, listening to packets. We use pickup, so it's not over the wire, but we are getting them from the kernel, and then we are parsing the packets from from the process. Can be quite lossy. You can miss packets and events because the like, PJM is quite bad in capturing packets and finding Yeah, yeah, it may be expensive in CPU depending on what you are doing on your loads. Normally, you may want to prefer to use logs and metric bit, uh, packet bit. Maybe something more specific for something depending on the use case. And the example you showed with MySQL, where you could see the queries, mm -hmm. if the communication was encrypted, then. Yeah, of course. If it's encrypted, yeah, you don't see the queries. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's on right now. Yeah, so uh, EP works very closely with the Beats team to contribute a lot of stuff. We recently also open sourced the Collect Beat, uh, which is one of the community plugin to make it easier for, I think our vision is that as a developer and the BT developer, when they deploy the application on top of Kubernetes, right? So all they need to do is that define where is my metrics, uh, what type, Prometheus, Drop Wizard, where is my log file, send it out, different things, and uh, we wanted to be able to make it easier so that we can automatically scrape the log and metric and send it there, right? So we've been working uh, with your team very closely on that one. Yeah. One of the things that I'd like to you know, plead is that, so there is this thing, a community about using Prometheus, they use Grafana, right? And then they use logs and analytics, they use uh, Kibana. So one of the things that EP has been trying to do is that, can we actually try to unify those two so that we have like one uh, you know, kind of open source console to actually look at both? And to be honest with you, we actually invested heavily in Kibana. So we actually uh, we added a lot of plugins, uh, even stuff that were not natively supported by Kibana. We actually intercepted the call to Kibana. We created the cube watch so that we can actually get all the API servers data. We, somebody in my team actually presented that yesterday, right? But I think one of the things that we could work together as part of the community is that can that be one potentially, right? Let's say Kibana, right? So because you have the timeline support as well that you can actually pull the you know metrics. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I feel Kibana is much more adopted on the operational you know theme, mm -hmm. um, you know. But this I I don't know the answer, but this is something that we could work together potentially, making Kibana can support uh, a much better visualization on the uh, time series data as well. Yeah, for sure. This is something we are targeting all the time, like improving Kibana to to see and to watch uh, time series information. And we actually have something called the Time Series Visual Builder, which is an easy interface to watch for time series metrics. And yeah, I uh, totally agree with you. I mean, you have been doing great work, and it has been a really cool journey, working together and putting everything in bits. And yeah, there are still many things we want to do on, on that regard. Thank you. So thank you, everyone.